So in our art journals, what is a simple thing we can do with a toilet paper roll? Uh, you might use them for tracing circles. You might use them as just a simple stamp. But today I want to share with you a more unique way of using these in your projects. So today I'll be showing you how you can make an art journal page using a simple toilet paper roll to make beautiful flowers. If we haven't met yet, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hopalong Studio. So let's get started. So how can these toilet paper rolls help you with stamping beautiful flower images? So I want to show you a couple that I've already made. These ones, I basically took a toilet paper roll and I cut into it. And you can cut it very fine like this to get a lot of little areas that you can stamp with. You can also cut them thicker. And I'm going to show you basically how you can use the different ones and what results they get you. I find the key with this is just going very slowly and trying to have them being similar sizes and stopping at a similar spot. So again, you can do them really thin like this, or you can make them quite a bit thicker like this. There's there's really options and it really comes down to how patient you are. But I find the key with this is trying to have them all around the same height. Because if you don't have them around the same height, it's not gonna lay flat on your project. And you're looking for something that's gonna lay flat, so you're gonna get a really good impression. If you find that you have a hard time cutting evenly, I would maybe even just uh, measure out to the size you want, create a, a pencil circle just to help you make sure that it stays flat. So after you finish making little tools, you need to choose the type of paint you're gonna use. I have this paper artsy paint. This is a scrapbooking paint. So this one actually has pigment in it, but it's more of a craft paint. Um, I don't really know the quality of it, but it works really well. I like these chalk acrylics. I like the finish on them. And so because I'm trying to use up a bunch of the paint in my collection, I wanted to use these colors today. And so if you're using a heavy body paint, so very thick paint for this, you're going to need to thin it out. And that's part of the reason I chose to use the paper artsy paint. Because it's a fairly fluid paint, you could also use fluid paint for this. And I'm just going to do a circle on my surface. And then what I'm going to do is take my tool and I'm going to start moving it around. You are going to be spreading it a little bit on your palette paper, but you're just trying to get really good coverage. So I have some areas that have a lot, some areas that have a little bit. You can decide to go more or less on this. The key is you don't want the thing gloppy. You don't want it covered in so much paint that it's gonna be hard to manage or control. I find the key with this technique is just adding only a little bit of paint at a time. And I wanna think a little bit about where I want these on my double page layout. I just wanna make sure that they look really, really nice. So I'm just gonna go down onto my page and you can see I haven't added a lot of paint. And because I've used this one before, I'm finding that um, it's not laying quite as flat. But that's a pretty good start to a shape. And because my journal is quite full, I'm, I'm actually at the quick, thick part of my journal where I have the thin pages here are thick. I'm, I'm working through kind of the end of this journal. I'm finding that um, it's a little bit harder on this side. So I'm just gonna be putting a third one over here. So you can see on that last one, I'm basically getting almost no paint and that's okay. So you just kind of come in, you swirl it around, you pounce it, you move it. You wanna try to get as much paint on there as possible. So. This one, I am just moving it around and you can choose to swirl a little bit if you want more of a strong pattern on the outside. But in this case, I kind of like tapping it a little bit more. And I'm finding with this one, because of the fact that I've used it before, a lot of them have started curling a little bit, which is why I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the paint where I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is just take my little edges here and I'm going to start Kind of bending them out a little bit. So I'm hoping that's going to give me a much flatter surface as I use this tool. It almost works better when you have a brand new toilet paper roll, but I wanted to show you how it would work with not having a new toilet paper roll. And so I'm going to try this again. I'm just going to add a little bit more white paint. So now I'm getting a little bit more even coverage there. So now when I put it down, I'm finding that's working a bit better, stamping all the way through. And then if you really feel like it, you can always just take your finger and put it down. So now you're seeing that some of those areas that weren't touching as well, I'm getting a much better coverage. But you can see that so far, I haven't been putting on super heavy layers. I find the super heavy layers is actually gonna take away from the look of this project, which is why I'm going quite thin. And now I'm gonna go in with some of the other paper artsy paint. This seems to be quite a bit thicker, this blue. So I'm gonna start by using this other pouncy tool 
And so now I'm getting quite a bit. So I gotta try to get some of that off of the edges because it's almost globbing on. And you don't want really globby spots when you're working on this. I just find that they just take over. But this is the one that's less fine. So I'm gonna be adding it to maybe this one here. And I think I might actually use my paper towel and just help it go down. So you can see I have really strong lines there. Some of it, it globbed a little bit, but you can see that you're not getting the fine marks that you get with this one. You're getting qu quite a bit stronger marks. So it depends if you like that or don't like that. Uh, this one here, now that it has a little less paint on it, you're getting a little bit thinner marks because it's not picking up everything. But I do find it does make a difference if you take the finer tool and you take the time to cut the finer strips. I prefer the finer strips to the thicker strips. But if you're a little bit impatient or you want something that's a little bit stronger like that, you can definitely go ahead and just make something that's maybe a little bit more bold than some of the ones that I've done. And what I like about this is just the really beautiful fine marks that it makes. And I, I really like the look of this. And then again, if you don't want a perfect circle in the center, this is where you can play around with just marring those edges a bit. You don't necessarily need to have a perfect circle. You can play around and make that a little bit softer in the center. And I feel like I'm losing a little bit of the yellow that I like. And so I'm gonna go back and add in some more yellow paint. And this is the thing is you can go back and forth. You don't have to stick with just one color or just one color combination. Or like in this case, my yellow has a little bit of blue in it. And if you like that, that can also work really, really well. So adding in back a little bit of that yellow because I, I like that yellow. I like the combination of these two colors together. And again, I'm not going perfectly. I want to have edges that are a little bit more wild. And I'm doing this purposely on black. You could also do this on white, but I like the look of the black on this page. And I really wanted to stick with just three images at this point. I like using groups of threes and fives. And that's part of the reason I used a larger page like this is I did want to have a little bit more room for these. I would maybe not have done them so low on the page next time. I realized I've kind of taken away some of the feeling of space along the bottom by doing it this way, but that's okay. It's gonna work. So for doing the centers, we have a few different options. We can come in. I have a little circular sponge here. You can use really anything circular. You could even use the top of a pen. There's lots of things you could use. I just happened to get these on sale um, at my local art store. And I'm just adding in a little center on these. And you can have a really strong center like that, or you can put it on very, very lightly so that it feels a little bit more abstract. Um, you can also come in with a little bit of blue. And this one is gonna have a little bit of blue and yellow together. So it's gonna be a little less of a strong center. And I, I like the centers a little bit softer. So that one here, I'm gonna just again soften it up a little bit. And this one I'm kind of smearing. It gives it again a different look. It depends on if you want something that's really smeared or really soft. Cause even this one, I can go around the edges. I can really soften that up or you can have it with a little bit more of a space around. The choice is completely yours. And then at this point, this is where I like coming in with a paintbrush. And I find a paintbrush is a really useful tool when we're doing this step. And I think I want to start with a little bit of the yellow. This yellow paint is quite thick, so I'm putting a little bit off to the side, and then I'm using a little bit of water to thin it out, because I want my fine brush to still stay fairly fine, because this is a liner brush, and the whole point is to have thinner lines. This is where we can choose to put lines out into our flower and you can see this is a dandelion you can see this is a flower it kind of depends on what you want to do with it I mean this is where if you want to make it a flower you could do a really interesting center on that but these are feeling a little bit more like dandelions today and that's where I'm running with them and this is where you could totally choose to use whites and and grays and really have a dandelion feel to it but in this case I wanted to keep this fairly simple and I'm really happy with the effect and so the second one, I'm also gonna use the same thing. I'm just gonna run in with some blue. Again, my paint is a little thick, so you want it more of a wash. You want more of a light wash because you don't want this to glob. You want very thin lines. And you can choose to kind of come up to just the edges or go way out into the page. The key to this is just flicking gently with your wrist. It's not having a lot of pressure on the page. It's going very, very gentle with your marks. And I'm really liking how that's looking. 
And I'm gonna add in uh, some of my stems. Some of this yellow paint is still wet, so that's great. And I'm gonna make them slightly curved. Those dandelion stalks, they're pretty tall and they kind of sit above the plant. And so that's what we're gonna be doing with these ones. And with this one, this one's really short. I would have actually probably done this one a little bit further up the page. I would have let them overlap a bit more, but I'm kind of working with what I got here. And then this one, I'm just gonna let him be only a little bit to the side here. And you don't wanna cover up too much of what you've already done. You don't want it getting too far into your project. But the other thing is you can come in with a little bit of blue. And I like doing the dual stems being different colors. So I'm gonna add blue just to the right hand side of it. And these can be a little bit thicker than what I originally put them down as. If you think about the head of a, a dandelion, they have a fairly strong stem, right? But what I like to do when I'm doing this is just start really, really thin and then work up to being thicker because once it's thick on the black paper, we're not painting in a background for this. So we're kind of stuck with whatever we end up with. So with this one, I would maybe have moved it somewhere else. I don't necessarily love the location of that, but that's okay. You know what? We, we live and we learn and we grow and we learn every single time we do one of these pages. I'm pretty happy with those. I'm just gonna let these fully dry and then I'm gonna add in a little bit of journaling and then I'm gonna show you a really interesting way of adding in some mediums and other textures to give this page just a little bit more texture. From here, I wanted to add in my journaling before I added anything else. I have a lot of these thickers stickers. I've had them for ages. This color works pretty well with this. So I'm gonna add in my phrase. So I decided to use the phrase for today's project is friendship means we don't do life alone. This is something that has really come to mind over the last few days. I just came out of a weekend of just having a wonderful time with some friends and just realizing just how important friendship is. Uh, not that I haven't always valued friendship, but it really keeps you on track. You have people who can ask you curious questions, ask you about how you really are doing, and be able to really take some time just to connect in a really meaningful way. And I find through those connections, it just helps us stay more grounded. Sometimes we can be really hard on ourselves. Sometimes we don't always treat ourselves with the kindness that we should. And the great thing about friends is often, if they are good friends, Friends, is they tell you all these wonderful things about you and it helps you see your strengths. It helps you see that you aren't alone in this life. And more importantly, it really helps you see the good in yourself. And by being able to be with people who encourage you, who help you, who are there almost as a sounding board in your life, it can make a big difference on how hard life can feel. I'll be honest, recently I've been feeling a little bit off and being able to be with my friends and be able to talk with them and just kind of work through some of these feelings and just have their support and have their encouragement it went a really long way for just how my general mental health has been feeling. And I've really have been spending some time over the last few months realizing just how thankful I am for the amazing friends that I have and just the reminder that I have them to go to. I don't have to do this life alone. This life can be so lonely. And if all we do is spend our time online or on social media, it can make us feel fairly isolated. And so there's something to be said about reaching out to a friend, having a conversation and just even investing in them. I find that so often they will ask you like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And it really can make a big difference on how we could go into the week, the next month and, and know that we're not alone in this world. I find with every one of my friends, they bring something different to my life and they have such amazing perspective that sometimes I find after talking with them, I realize, well, I never thought of the world that way, or I never saw things like this. And because of their influence on my life, it has helped me so much and has helped me just grow in ways I would never been able to grow alone. I also decided to add in some of my writing with my Thule our pastel pens. These ones are great because they have all of those pastel colors that work really well on black. And they will also, uh, I have a lot of colors to choose from so I can get to match my way out pretty well. So my challenge to you with this is, do you have a friend you haven't reached out to recently? Is there someone that you would love to be able to connect with again? Um, take the time to reach out. You never know what they might be going through and you don't know that just being there for them, it could lead to some really interesting conversation and just both of you leaving the conversation feeling just so much more encouraged. So this is where you can leave this page right here. It looks gorgeous, you have lots going on, you have some nice black space in it, 
but I wanted to try to play with something and I'm not too sure if it's gonna work. We're just gonna see if this helps or if it's gonna take away from it. Um, sometimes I like throwing things in at the end just to see what kind of textures and things I can create. So what I'd like to do with this is we're not gonna be adding in a lot of color. All we're gonna add in is a little bit of texture. So I have regular gel, semi-gloss here, and I have it in my little container. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this out and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of iridescent medium. This is an effects iridescent medium, so it's gonna create a little bit of shine and glimmer, but it's not gonna create any color. One thing to realize with gel mediums is they do dry clear. So what I'm trying to create here is a little bit of extra texture onto my surface. And you can see that by adding in that iridescent medium, now we have some shine going on. And it's gonna be really pretty when we add it onto our page. And so if you find this a little bit not mixed media enough for you, or you wanna play around with a little bit of texture, I'm gonna add in a little bit. I may love it, I may be like I should have left it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see where we end up. But I wanted to give this a try and just see what happened. And so I'm just using um, just a honeycomb stencil here. And I'm just gonna add in a little bit of this onto our project. And so I'm not adding it all over it. I'm just going to add it in a few places. I'm going to be adding it over top of some areas of color. What's neat about, again, the medium is that it's not going to cover up that color. Instead, it's going to just be this clear layer over top. That's going to just dry fairly shiny. And so I don't want to do a ton of this because I don't want to take away too much from what's going on here. I thought it might be fun just to add in a couple little spots, just to add in a little bit of texture and a little bit of variety to this background. Because sometimes I think we think about gel mediums and a lot of these mediums as being super thick layers that we have to do a lot with, but instead maybe you just add in a little bit of, of shine in a couple places, you add it in, this is like a little spot of, of color and texture. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I was about to film this and I went, well, how about I just add in some gel? <laughs> so you are going to discover with me whether or not I love this or not. Depending if you wanted to keep this page really simple, you could have stopped where we were. But this is kind of the final layer to maybe just add in a little something something and see kind of how it turns out, see what comes of it. But let's say you want to add a little bit of shine and a little bit of interest to your dandelion. What I'm doing here is I'm just using a little bit of the side of my palette knife and I'm just adding in tiny little lines of shimmer. And you can see that already it is drying with a little bit of shimmer on it. And so if you like a little bit of shine in your projects, and I do, I always do, this is another way of just creating a little bit of texture and interest to your page. And again, because it's going to dry completely clear, you're not taking away from your project. So if you're new to mediums, this might be a fun way of just adding in a little bit of a shine, texture, and color without feeling like, well, maybe you have a project that you love and you're afraid of ruining it. This way, it's gonna dry clear. What's the worst that happens? You have a, a clear textured layer on your page, which is not the end of the world. And you'll have to tell me what you think of this. If you like this shimmer or not adding the shimmer on this, if you like my final result when it dries, because I'll, I'll show you the final project once it fully dries. Um, but I'm quite curious to see what you liked more. If you liked it more before I added the, the shimmer or not, I would really love to hear what you have to say. There we go. I'm going to let this dry and uh, I will come back and show you what the finished project looks like. So here's our finished page and now it's fully dry. So you can see that we have a little bit of shimmer and shine from the medium. It ended up being a little bit more cloudy and opaque than I planned on. And I realized that was because I also use semi-gloss medium. If you use glossy medium, it's gonna be completely clear. The mattifying agent that they put in does create a little bit of cloudiness. And because I use an iridescent medium, I'm not surprised I'm seeing a little bit of the iridescent medium along with the cloudiness that it's come across a little bit stronger than I expected. I don't mind it though. I think it looks good. It adds a little bit of texture, um, but I did also really like it with just the straight black. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are if you liked it more with the straight black or if you like that extra texture. I hope you've enjoyed this whole concept of using a simple toilet paper roll to create a beautiful art journal page. Again, it doesn't take a lot of time. It's not overly complex, but it's a great way of creating a really simple project to get those thoughts and those feelings and that journaling out there without too much trouble. And with this one, because I had the black background, you could have written all over that page if you had a lot to say. And so I hope this is giving you some really simple ideas 
for how you can create in your art journal. And if you've enjoyed this video, if you could like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you're looking for another video about painting in the art journal, click here. This is one I did a while back that I hope that you'll enjoy. So I'll see you in that next video.